Well, you're a pretty entertaining narrator, and I always tell people that when they ask, like, who's an entertaining narrator, I always give them mine. You're, you and, and our other narrator who does the, the original Kate series and Maggie series for me, Liz, and I'm always like, they're fantastic narrators. They're really, um, they're really exciting. But I, I think you you fit really well with Jack's personality. I can definitely, I, you, you sound, the, you say the th things like Jack would say them in my mind. So I think um, what was most interesting was when we hopped series was I was like, I'll tell you, I was afraid to listen to your audition because I was like, is this going to work? Because you did Shadow so well. And I'm like, this is a completely different type of book. I mean, it is worlds away from Shadow Slayers. So I was like concerned when I saw your name pop up as an audition. And I was like, am I going to like this? Am I going to hate it? What am I going to do? Because I didn't want to like jeopardize our Shadow Slayers relationship because you're a fantastic narrator for the Slayers. And I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? And then I listened to it and I was like, this is like worlds different. You didn't even sound like you, like the you I'm used to listening to for Shadow Slayers. So I was really impressed at how different, you know, you read um, the book as it should be read. And it was completely different from the way you read Shadow Slayers, which is obviously a completely different series. My name is Jack Reed. I live in the town of Dunhaven, Scotland. I'm the estate manager at Dunhaven Castle. I've started this journal because I've discovered something incredible. I'm still reeling from the discovery, actually. I should know I shouldn't be writing this all down. But this is the only way I can make sense of it. You see, I've just learned that time travel exists. Yeah. Time travel. I couldn't believe it either. Nelly H. Steele, it's good to talk to you again. Good to be here again. Now, I know you as Melissa, but Nelly H. Steele is the, the your author name. Remind us where that name comes from again. It comes from my maternal grandmother. Her last name was Steele, and her sister's name was Helene, and they called her Nell. So I combined the two. And how are the animals? They're good. I, I'm surprised you didn't hear them because I just heard somebody barking somewhere and a cat scratching at the door here. So they're they're doing obviously well. <laughs> so how many have you got at the minute? Because you, you rescue them, don't you? Yes, I do. I have we still have 14 right now. Six dogs, eight cats. Haven't lost any, haven't gained any. So, you know, haven't lost any is the important part. <laughs> So have you got like kennel facility facilities and stuff at your house? No, they all live just in the house. Um, the cats used to be indoor outdoor and they've slowly turned indoor only. Um, so we have a good wooded piece of property behind us. And so they used to, you know, kind of run their little territory out there. And then they slowly got lazier and lazier and lazier and started to just hang out in the house. And our, our last one, who used to go in and out, doesn't go in and out anymore because the last time he was out, he got beat up by another oh, cat. Right. And they he ran him up a tree and then he ran up the tree and he hid there. And I went to get a ladder to get him because I'm not real good at climbing trees anymore. So I didn't want to, you know, scurry up the tree. He was pretty far up. He was about 20 feet in the air. Um, so I didn't want to scurry up the little tree that he had gotten himself up. And by the time I got the ladder, he had come down out of the tree but he hurt himself oh we had to go to the vet and it was during like covid so you have to drop them at the vet and leave and you know for cats it's traumatic at the vet to begin with but the vet called us um and said do you happen to know what foot you think he hurt because he's walking around here like nothing's wrong with him <laughs> and so i luckily did because they said, this is not abnormal behavior for kitties. They come in and they're like real tough and they're like, nothing's wrong with us. Just let us go home. But they were able to find an abscess in his paw. And so ever since then, he's not allowed to go out anymore either because he's like too wimpy to be outside at this point. So they're all inside now. Right. And is it a big house? It's pretty big. Okay. Um, so they, they all have their own space. 
Um, they're able to, you know, the cats usually can hang out without ever seeing a dog for the most part of the day. The dogs do have a bedtime. So the cats have like unfettered access to the house um, when the dogs are asleep because they we've crate trained them. So they sleep in their crates for the most part, except for like one who was a mill mama. If you're not familiar with that, it means that they just um, took her from the time she was a puppy. She was in a cage. She was not out of her cage and she was force bred for about four years, as many times as they could get litters out of her. Um, so she had not seen grass before she came to our house or anything like that. Um, the first time that she actually walked outside of a crate was when we rescued her from a shelter. So um, she's the only one who kind of gets spoiled. She has pretty much free reign and the cats don't mind her. She's a tiny Yorkie. So the cats are like, we can easily take care of that one if we had to. So wow, they all have their own spaces. I mean, we've got, we've got two cats in, in a, in a reasonably small or definitely small for us standards, two bedroom apartment. And uh, that's really enough for us. They're indoor cats. But to have 14 animals, including dogs, uh, yep. and, <laughs> and you teach as well, how do you get any time to write? So I, I try to balance things as best I can. We have a pretty tight schedule, to be honest. I mean, I'm up at 4 a.m. every day. Um, we do breakfast for get everything ready for everybody. Um, I, then I jog for a little bit. And then we get everybody up out of bed. And then that's when the real fun starts, right? It's like 6 a.m. We start getting the dogs up. So now the cats know it's time to kind of descend into the depths. Um, we have a finished basement. They have a whole wraparound couch and there's enough seats for all of them. So they just come down and they all get their seats and we get the dogs up and we feed them. We have a fenced in yard so it makes it easy to let them out and everything like that. And then they know it's time, the dogs know it's time to like settle down because I'm either going to do student meetings or I'm going to try to get some writing done depending on what's on my schedule that day. Um, or they know, and we and they've learned this because you're our narrator on two series. That's right. They've learned like it's Graham Mack time or it's Liz <laughs> Gentle time because she's our other narrator. And they know like it's time to go in and they get on, They have we have beds in the office, they get on the beds and they climb in there and they lay down for a nap while we listen to the audio books that you've done. All right. They kind of know this. So, and they know they, your voice. Is it a tough room? How do I go over? It's pretty good. I'll tell you what, um, you were probably, and this is, this is like one of the things that edged you out was that the dogs didn't bark at your voice. I mean, some of them, they were not, they did not like, Really, they were definitely like, who are these people that we hear talking? Um, it's like when I do meetings, cause I'm, I'm online for the most part, when I do meetings with department chairs and stuff, like when sworn comes on, they bark at him. All they don't right. like his voice very much. Right. So they hear him talking and that you, it's pandemonium. And I have to like mute for the first couple minutes of a meeting because I'm like, <laughs> I know as soon as you speak, they're going to they're gonna just start barking. But they've gotten used to your voice so that when they hear you, they don't think anything of it. We'll just lay down and go to sleep. <laughs> oh, that's good. It's not good for you as a writer. You want your stuff to be compelling. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, but at least, you know, they're not, um, we can get through like a two hour session in, in like not eight hours with like constant barking, like department meetings, I feel like are tough on my department chair. <laughs> and it's just you and your mom are the only humans in the house. You're totally outnumbered. My dad, my dad's here too. Okay. Um, he, yeah. He, they know Pap Pap. They love Pap Pap. Okay. Pap Pap I think might be one of their favorite pr people. Okay, so they've got a thing for blokes then. They do. Or dudes, as you would say. <laughs> for only certain ones. Right. Okay. Well, I'm glad I'm in, like, that, I'm in that. I'm in that higher echelon. Of, yeah, of, they of the... like they don't mind lady voices as much as men's, but there's certain men's voices they react to more often. But I don't think I think yours was one of the few that they didn't really have too much of a reaction to. So we were like, oh, this is good. We might actually be able to get through the audiobook listen through without having to pause every couple seconds because the dogs don't mind his voice. <laughs> I see. So that's what really got me the work. Nothing to do with the uh, the quality of the, the narration. It's just that the dogs give you an easier time when you're listening back. 
<laughs> that might have been one of the things, but I'll, I'll tell you what, probably what really did it was our like slight miscommunication with the 15 character voice reel that I made you do that I still feel badly over. No, that's fine. But... For anyone who didn't see the last time we had a chat, that we're, we're about to talk about uh, a new series. It's a fabulous series that uh, Nellie H. Steele, who I know as Melissa, has done. Uh, but the first one, it was the uh, the Shadow... God, geez, what's Shadow it? Slayers. Shadow Slayers, which was a terrific series. And it does have a lot of incredibly varied characters because there are, there are um, characters from Maine, a state I've mm-hmm. never visited. And you were quite specific about how one of them was to sound. There are English characters. There's a lot of Americans and there's a, there's a lot. And I remember I auditioned for it and you sent me a message saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then you, uh, you asked me to, to voice them and say, did you ask me to send the audio or did I say, look, I'll send you the audio. I can't remember how it worked. I think you, I think you offered and I was like, fine. (laughs) <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Because I wanted to. I wanted to know. It's funny. I, I did an interview. It's just gone out. I've just. Uh, if you go to my Twitter, I've just sent a link to it, and they did an interview with me. It's the audio book review, and they 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 asked me a specific question. What can authors do to make it easier for a narrator? So I put in there, and I didn't name you. I should have done maybe, but I I said. What they have to do is just be very clear about how they want the characters to sound. I said I had one lady I worked with who asked, I think I think I said you asked me, and I can't, it was probably if I offered, I can't remember. Anyway, and I said, uh, who asked me to, to, you know, send her an audio file of each of the characters for her to okay before I started reading the book. And I say in the interview, and it was great because as I was doing the book, I wasn't second guessing. Have I got this character right? Is this the way she's written this? I knew straight away. No, she signed this one off. This is how she wants this to sound. Way we go. And I now work that way with all the books I do, not necessarily with the authors signing them off, but I do have now an audio file of every single character, no matter how big or small they are. And I go back to it. So you, you helped with the development of how I work. And it's much easier that way now. So thank you for that. So don't feel bad. <laughs> but but at the time, I remember I said to Julie, I said, geez, this, this one I've got now, she's going to be high maintenance. I don't know if I want this. <laughs> I know. I remember feeling that way a little bit. Because I, like After it was done, I felt a little bit bad that like I kind of made you do all these different accents. But I was like, it's such an incredibly varied story, that yeah. one. That, you know, I just, I didn't want to get halfway through it and have you redoing like an hour's worth of work with yeah. somebody who's done it completely wrong. Yeah. So I know before we, I know we went back and forth a few times and I still tell that story. I'm like, yeah, I think pretty sure he thought I was crazy at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was good fun. Now, the the latest book you've done is set in Scotland and it, it, you've done Dunhaven Castle books before. But this Mm -hmm. is Jack's journal. This is the journal of Jack Reed, who is what? What's his job at the castle? He's kind of a, he's a groundsman, and he's he kind of looks after the place, doesn't he? So he's not he's not part of the family that owns the castle. He's just a right. He's just a down to earth kind of a fella, who who works there. Now, so the all of the accents. Oh no, there was a couple of English ones, wasn't there? But most of the accents anyway, there's far fewer characters in this one, are Scottish. Mm -hmm. But you're in Pennsylvania. So why did you set this and the Dunhaven Castle? Why why Scotland? So there's a couple of reasons. Um, My family heritage is in Scotland and England. My grandmother came over to America when she was very young. Um, She was from Millam. England. So, she, you know, she came Whereabouts over. Where is she from? In Millam. M-I-L-L-O-M, I think, is the spelling of that. It's a little, small town. What county is it in? <laughs> that I couldn't tell you. Oh, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> I'll have to look it up and I will let you know. But um, I know that's where she, where she came from. So, you know, I have a lot of, of heritage over there. Um, because you know, she was, she wasn't even born in, in our country, just my mom was. Um, so, uh, 
we always read growing up books that were set over in England. My grandma did, um, you know, she loved this country, but that was where her home was. Um, and so when I first started thinking, she always read what I call girls running away from castle books. So if you think <laughs> of like gothic, romancy, mystery type of books. Um, so when I set out to write my first book, of course, this is what I had in my head because it's what I grew up with my grandmother reading and my mother reading and me eventually reading. So I'm thinking it's gotta be in a castle Yeah. and given the unique quirks in the castle that Kate runs into when she comes over in the, her original version of the Dunhaven series. It's gotta be somewhere remote enough that, you know, that this isn't gonna be like central London where everybody knows what's going on or can easily find out. So, um, you know, when I looked into places, I thought what's better than, than kind of the beautiful scenery of the Scottish Highlands and a huge secret. Yes, and yes, and that isolation so that you can you can put all the characters because it's a who done it this well mm -hmm. we, well what's out now is Jack's journal is book one which kind of sets everything up and you and I know that I've already done book two which will be out in the next few days which mm -hmm. is a, is a continuation but you could just read one on its own you could read two on its own actually that you don't need to to get them all but the second one becomes a who done it and the great thing you've done as the device is to have all of the people together in the one place like a proper Agatha Christie but right. it, go, it goes beyond that though because there's can we say there's time travel yeah, you can say it yep. okay <laughs> so there's I know we won't spoil it too much but there's there's a there's a mystery there's a whodunit element and there's time travel because Kate who is American she travels back in time for a very important reason. And I don't think we should go any further than that as far as spoiling it goes. Now, now the idea, and this isn't a spoiler because this is just part of a setup of it. I'll, I'll show you agree. It's not a, a spoiler. Is that the, the castle is owned by a, an old family and they kind of run out of next of kin and they have to discover who the next owner is. And it turns out that Kate Kenzie is an American and that that gives it a lovely twit where did that idea come from that you were going to place an American in a Scottish castle so one of the things I really like to do with my stories is um, put somebody in a situation um, just an average ordinary person in a situation they never would have expected to be in because I think that's something we can all relate to then so you, you don't want to make um, you know one of the problems with kind of having Kate is old money is the fact that she grew up with this and maybe the average reader wouldn't connect to somebody who isn't going through a tough time or isn't having to experience something new. And that's the one thing I think we can all latch on to is that you know everybody experiences something new or unexpected at some point in their life. So you know what that feels like. So you can imagine what it might feel like to be American Kate She's in a struggling job. Um, if you read the original series, it'll go through the fact that, you know, that she's um, struggling in her career, that she doesn't have any family around, that, you know, she thinks she's on her own except for her little dog, Riley. And um, then she suddenly out of the blue finds out, hey, you're an heiress to a Scottish castle. Do you want to move over there? And she, she's like, sure, because I don't have any job to pay my bills at this point and uh, I have no nothing tying me here. So she heads over to Scotland and um, part of the original series is Kate's journey in going from kind of this backward introverted American into a whole entirely different country. She experiences a new culture. Um, she has to acclimate to an entirely new situation on top of the fact that she didn't discover she can time travel. <laughs> so she really goes through it in the first book from um, just, uh, you know, from moving from one country to another, a country that she's never been to. Um, and thank goodness it's English speaking for her, at least, which was another great reason to set it in Scotland, because at least she can understand them when she goes there. Um, but she has to go through not only the entire culture shock of moving, um, but also the shock of there's not something quite right within this castle. And, oh, my gosh, I can time travel. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got a reluctant time traveler in there in Jack. But mm -hmm. Jack, I really got to like Jack. He he was just so down to earth and such a a nice guy where he could have been overwhelmed. And he was apprehensive 
when Kate, an mm -hmm. American, runs over, comes over as his new boss. But the relationship between those two, I think, is is really nice because it's respectful from Jack's part, but he does have some <laughs> some concerns about how gung ho Kate tends to be. And uh, is, was that based on anything from real life? Because it is a really good relationship that the two of them have. They do have a nice relationship, um, and I I think. Um, some of the the thing that goes into constructing their relationship is the fact that and and certainly from what I've read from readers and stuff is they get so tired of of um, the trope of people being rude to the person who comes. So um, you know you want to establish something where they're they're nervous. Um, I think certainly Mrs. Fraser is very nervous yes. when Kate there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, that, that Kate is not looking to, you know, pull anything over on anybody or, you know, she's, she's not gonna, you know, be a really rude owner or anything like that. She's actually, um, quite unassuming and quite thrilled to be there. Um, and she wants to pass her good fortune on to others. So, um, you'll notice she brings her friend Molly over in the second book. She's gonna, you know, offer for Molly to come over and join her because she really is interested in making everybody around her be as comfortable as she is. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that helps with Jack's relationship with her. Jack is, you know, definitely much more extroverted than Kate. He's easygoing, laid back, you know, he he's kind of traveled the world a little bit and then realized he belongs in Dunhaven and, and he didn't realize how much he belonged in, Dun in Dunhaven until Kate gets there. Um, but then, you know, he's the one who's like, whoa, whoa, I don't think we should be diving into this. And she's like, this is so fun. And he's like, I think we maybe need to take a little step back. So he's always going to kind of be her voice of reason. And I think that's one of the key things that fits really well with this novel is that, you know, they balance each other out. Mm. So, you know, one of the things when I first started writing was, you know, do, do we give Kate a sidekick or don't we? Does Kate do this on her own? And I, and I think she needs balanced and he needs balanced. So they fit together really well to make sure that, you know, one of them's kind of always going, well, I don't know if this is a great idea. And the other one is kind of saying, well, let's just try this. And so they, they can, bounce ideas off each other, which I think is a really important thing, especially when they're um, talking about changing history. Yes. What What is great is that obviously Kate is the fish out of water uh, for, for most of the book in the environment of Scotland. But then she puts Jack, who's very comfortable at the castle, working at the castle. She suddenly makes him fish out of water because of the time travel situation. And then I'm not going to spoil this, but then she doubles down and in the second book and puts him even further fish out of water. <laughs> However, he thrives and is really good in that environment, an environment that is a, a career path that is totally foreign to him, but he just goes for it. Was Where did that come from? Because that really does make it for me. Is Because I can see she sends him that way and I think, oh, I don't know, I hope he doesn't mess things up. But he thrives at it with no experience where did that come from I, but then there's that because it turns around then that he's you know she starts out for shadow and then he goes that way it's just great right. yeah yeah i think that's one of the cool things about the book is is you notice how out of place she is in scotland and then when they start traveling back in time he's like how is she doing this she's so calm and collected and he's the one who's kind of like you know sweating and you know he's breathing a sigh of relief every time they come back and yeah she really does put him on the spot and in something that she innocently doesn't think is gonna snowball the way that it does um but he really does thrive in there i mean he you know he he really um he comes up with some interesting stuff i think when he's put to to the mat there um, and, and as we'll go through the series, um, readers of the original series know a little bit about Jack. Um, you'll see that he has somewhat of an unexpected background that will, will explain why he might be so good at this. Uh, okay. but right. she really does. Um, she throws him to kind of to the wolves almost a little bit there and, and he's just like, well, okay, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> so how much, you know, as you are an American, how much of you is in Kate? So um, Kate's probably one of the closer characters to me. Um, I know we talked about this with Celine and I was like, definitely, I'm not really that close to Celine. Kate's probably closer to my personality. 
Um, and she was my first kind of um, creation that I uh, published. So, you know, they say, write what you know. So um, I, I tend to have a little bit of Kate in me. I'm, I'm more of an introvert like Kate is. Um, I'm more of a homebody like Kate is. She just loves kind of hanging out at the castle with her dogs and um, doing her research. So those um, elements are definitely something that fit with my personality. I don't have a cat in Scotland, unfortunately, though. You don't know, but what? Hey, you know, one day if the book, you know, if the book writing carries on, you yeah. know, there's, there's no, <laughs> there's no reason why you can't have a castle in Scotland one day. Right. Right. So this is, is this the fifth or or sixth book we've done together? How many books were in the shadows? No, there was three in Shadow Slayers. Then, mm-hmm. then we've done this one, Jack's Journal, and in a few days' time, book two in Jack's right. journal will come out and Dunhaven goes. So this is, so we've done five together. How did working, how did work turning them into an audio book in this series compared to the other ones we've done? Um, I, I would say they're probably pretty equal. You're a pretty entertaining narrator. And I always tell people that when they ask like, who's an entertaining narrator, I always give them mine. Your, you and, and our other narrator who does the, the original Kate series and Maggie series for me, Liz, and I'm always like, they're fantastic narrators. They're really, um, they're really exciting. But I, I think you you fit really well with Jack's personality. I can definitely, I, you, you sound, the, you say the th- things like Jack would say them in my mind. So I think um, what was most interesting was when we hopped series was I was like, I'll tell you, I was afraid to listen to your audition because I was like, is this going to work? Because you did Shadow so well. And I'm like, this is a completely different type of book. I mean, it is worlds away from Shadow Slayers. So I was like concerned when I saw your name pop up as an audition. And I was like, am I going to like this? Am I going to hate it? What am I going to do? Because I didn't want to like jeopardize our Shadow Slayers relationship because you're a fantastic narrator for the Slayers. And I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? And then I listened to it and I was like, this is like worlds different. You didn't even sound like you, like the you I'm used to listening to for Shadow Slayers. So I was really impressed at how different, you know, you read um, the book as it should be read. And it was completely different from the way you read Shadow Slayers, which is obviously a completely different series. Yeah. With Shadow Slayers, I do the narration bits as me. And then I Mm -hmm. do the characters as the characters. But with this one, because it is the journal of Jack, who is a Scotsman who lives and works in a castle, there's none of me in in the narration of this this series. Um, I'm Jack in this one. And I'm very lucky because I've got an uncle who... Oh, actually, no, he's died now. To, sorry, to, just to bring things up to speed. But he was my favorite uncle, my uncle Brian. And he lived in Scotland on an island, the Isle of Bute in Rothsay. And um, we would go up there every now and again. And, and as a kid, I managed to pick up from different people that, you know, not only my uncle Brian, who ended up with a Scottish accent, but... Um, the the locals up there and I, and I was always fascinated by the the musical sound of of how those people spoke so to do uh I've done a couple of books as as scottish so it was it was uh it was good to bring that into play and that's that's where it came from the all the characters you know uh, um you know like Jack's dad who was very much like that who we we changed him didn't we he was going to be um who was he going to be and then we we changed um, Charlie Frazier. Yeah. That's Cause right. I was like, yeah. that reminds me so much of, of Stanley Reed. Yes. Um, and then Mr. Frazier was a little bit more soft-spoken. He's the one yes. who doesn't really say too much. So we did change him and he fits really well with Stanley. That voice fits really well with Stanley. Yeah. And that's what, uh, that's what we did, but they're all people I met when as a kid in Scotland. <laughs> so they are, but they are based on real people, the, the voices. Um, so yeah, it was a lovely, lovely book to do. And I really got to, uh, really got to like Jack as a, as a character. I feel like I know him and, um, he's a good, solid, honest bloke, you know, the kind of bloke who goes to his pap and asks him for, uh, for advice and, uh, they have beers together and, uh, it, it was just, just a lovely, lovely story. And, uh, it was it was just great to do so thank you very much so there will be more in this series 
There will be. Um, right now, Kate Kinsey has three books out, and she's going to have her fourth come out in November. And then what we'll do is we'll bring out the Jack's Journal versions of those as well. So there's already Holiday Heist, and we'll have Jack's Journal version of the Holiday Heist one come out. And then um, Danger at Dunhaven Castle comes out in November. That's the original Kate Kenzie version. And then we'll have Jack's version. And um, you'll see a little, you'll see a lot of crossover. So the Kate and Jack conversations appear in both books just to keep the story continuity there. But I think what the neat thing is, what people like about Jack's journal is that in the original set of books, it's told from um, pretty much Kate's perspective. So if it doesn't happen to Kate or nobody tells Kate about it, we don't know about it. So we never knew what happened happened in any of those scenes where just Jack is involved. We never saw him speak to his grandfather. We never okay. saw him with Randolph. So this is all new information for readers um, of the original series. So they can either read Jack's journal or the, if, you know, I had a lot of people who, you know, read the original version and then Jack's version right after. So they can see Jack's perspective on everything within the story. Um, and it does give you more information. There's there's some extras that he talks with Kate that aren't in the original series where he texts with her. Um, and you know, I know moving through, I know the story for, I don't wanna out too much of the story for book four, but there are periods where Jack and Kate are apart for an extended period of time. So we're gonna see what Jack goes through in those moments um, because we'll know what Kate has been through and then it's like well what was jack doing for 61 hours where they weren't in contact with each other so that's a great idea but so they they are the same stories but they're just from totally different angles right they're just told from a different perspective so some of the conversations um if you were to read the original book you'll see the conversations between kate and jack or you know pretty much word for word um from the original stories but what we never saw is you know what jack does when he's not with kate and mm. we've had no more than what jack has told us in the brief conversations they have where he says oh well this is what happened and, and it, it, usually those are pretty brief um, but we never actually get to see everything Jack's done behind the scenes, which I think is pretty eye-opening, as you said. She <laughs> really throws him into it. <laughs> and, and it takes him a long time to dig his way out of that situation she puts him in. Um, and so no one has ever seen that before, you know, the this, this second book came out. And the other thing that people really enjoy is, is seeing Jack's perspective on particularly Kate. Yes. Um, is uh, I get messages and emails a lot about Jack and Kate. They're a very popular pair and everybody wants to know if it's going somewhere beyond friendship. <laughs> so everyone wants to know what Jack was thinking about Kate. And that I think is the big draw in Jack's journal is like, is he gonna let anything slip in terms of what his thoughts are on Lady Kate? Well, wow. okay. Well, the first one, mm -hmm. as you can see here, is called, if I'm pointing the right way, yes, I am. It's called The Secret Keepers. This is Jack's Journal 1. Jack's Journal 2 will be out in a few days' time. There will be, oh, there we go. And there will be more in the series, and there'll be more Shadow Slayers as well. Mm-hmm. Yep, so, we should be talking to book four in the next couple months, I think. It's written, it just is going through its review process uh, to get that final manuscript for you. We can't wait to hear it. Great. Oh, yeah. Well, it'd be good to bring back some of those characters as well because there's some fun characters in there. Is the Duke, does he make an appearance in the, in the next one? He's my oh, favorite. Oh, he makes a big appearance in the next one. He's my favorite character, as you probably know, in that series. Uh, but I do, and, and totally different to Jack. Jack is such a, such a genuine bloke and the Duke mm -hmm. is a villain. Um, so it, uh, geez, you do a lot. Of, it's quite the range you do them. <laughs> so, goodness me. Okay. Well, the books are available now to download. If you go to the, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you go to the description, all the links are there to download the books. There's another link there that will get you the 30 day free trial of Audible, but, uh, make sure you check them out. They are really, really enjoyable. Um, and once again, thanks for choosing me, and thanks to your dogs for choosing me. Really, because it sounds <laughs> like my... to pass it along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, biscuits for everyone. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Melissa Nelly H. Steele, thank you very much for talking to me, and continued success. Thank you. How was that? Is there anything else you need to get in there? 
I don't think so. I think that was pretty much everything. Okay, yeah, because we were due for another one. Uh, with, yep. with it being a new series, we needed to get one to talk about the new series, but we talked about Shadow Slayers as well. So, yeah, it's all good. So what are you up to for the rest of the day? I am going to try to get a little bit more writing done. We're doing our final proofing of um, Kate Kenzie 4, and then I'm hoping um, we'll move be moving into Shadow Slayers 4. And I, I think... I think you'll like Shadow Slayers 4 based off of what I've written. I know you like the Duke. Yeah. And I don't want to give too much away either, but I think um, as Jack's journal continues, you might get a few surprises there you might like too. Excellent. All right. Melissa, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And uh, thank you once again for selecting me to be part of this wonderful project for both projects. It's just so much fun to do. Thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.